Let's continue our introduction to Copernicus by looking at the Stamp Points node and how it interacts with information from SOPS. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon. But let's go ahead and drop down a copnet, dive inside here, and let's bring in our Stamp Points node as well. And by default, it's not really going to give us anything, and that's because we have to actually provide it some points to copy to. And that's going to be coming from SOPs. So let's drop down a SOP import. And let's just create a grid. You can use whatever object you'd like, but in this case, I'm going to use a grid just so it matches what we have in our COP viewport. Let's change this to the XY plane so it matches, like I said. And then we can do a UV flatten to give us some UVs and then a scatter node to give us some points. Let's change this to like 30 points. And we can dive back up to our cop net here. And we need to rasterize this geometry. So we're going to do our rasterize setup. Oops. And we're going to wire this in here. And we can take a look. Now we have our points. Let's go ahead and wire those into our points input. And now we see that we have some squares that are being copied to our individual points. So we can play around with the different settings here. We can change the scale. We can change the angle. We can set up our fall off, play around with the filter for that. You can even change this to a circle if we'd like. I'm going to go ahead and just reset all of these because what makes this really interesting is we have the ability to add our own shapes into this. So let's just create a SDF shape node. Take a look at that. Let's make this maybe, I don't know, a regular polygon is fine. Let's do an SDF to mono. Wire this in here and let's go ahead and wire this into our stamp input. Now you can see that that has automatically switched over to using our shape that we've created right here. And we can add in a bunch of these if we like. So we can change the number of stamps that we have down here. So if we change this from one, we can go all the way up to eight. So this will be from zero to seven here. Now, obviously we don't have that many piped in, but you could create a bunch of shapes and then randomize them. I'm going to set this to two and I'm going to make a copy of this. And let's take this shape and let's change this from regular polygon to um, maybe a star. And let's wire that into our stamp one. Now, if I take a look at it, you see that nothing actually changes. And the reason for that is we need to give this our, or we need to tell the stamp points node which point corresponds to which shape. And much like the copy to points node in SOPs, that's what we're going to do in here as well. So let's dive into our SOP import. Let's drop down an attribute randomize. And what we're actually going to use for our attribute name is going to be called stamp. So again, very similar to what we would do inside of like a copy to points to set up different, you know, meshes to, to copy to those points. In this case, we're going to use the stamp attribute name. We're going to set this to a dimension of one and we're going to change this from uniform to discrete. And this just allows us to enable a step size. So by default, it's going from zero to nine with a step size of one. So it'll be, if we look at our points, we have zero all the way up to nine with no integer or sorry, no float values in between there. It's all integer values, which is what we're looking for. So let's change this down to zero to one because we have two inputs. And we can jump back up here. And now we have some different uh, objects being copied to each individual point. Now, that's not the only way to, or the only um, attribute that is recognized from SOPs. So let's take a look at some of the others. Much like you'd probably expect, we have CD, which will work. We also, whoops, make a copy here. We also have P scale, which again, just like copy to points, works the exact same way. So to select point two. And then lastly, another one that we have that we'll take a look at here is the orient attribute. So we'll set this to a four dimensional. Let's set this to inside sphere to give us a random, random orientation. And now you see we get something a little bit different here. So if I just actually, let me lock the viewport real quick. If I jump in here, and I just disable this orient attribute. You see, we have our P scale, we have our color. If I jump up and come to our 
signature, I can set this to RGB and we get those random colors that are not just grayscale. But when I activate that orient attribute, it's going to kind of skew them in ways that are uh, more akin to something being, you know, 3D in shape. So that's kind of cool. You can play around with that and get some different attribute um, or different uh, randomization of your rotations to get some really interesting and, and cool looks. Maybe not be perfect for every situation, but it's definitely an option that you can use. And that is kind of a, a look at the stamp points node. Like, let's jump back up here actually and just show if we drop in our pig head, we can see we get some, some more interesting stuff here. So if I look at our UVs, so this is being placed onto the, the UVs. You see we have our UVs there. And with our rasterize setup, it's going to rasterize onto those actual UVs. And if I come back up here, Let's set this to take a look at this. Uh, we don't want to look at our pig head. Let's come back down in here and let's do our preview material. And I'll just make a copy of this real quick and I will set this one to our pig head and wire this into our geo. We'll wire this stamp input to, to our base color. And you can see that we have stuff being copied you know, onto our object. Now this isn't gonna be seamless and that's okay because that's not really the point of this. Uh, but you can see that we have our objects that are actually being copied onto this. Now, if you wanted to make this seamless, um, you could do some different things to in order to do so. But we were just taking a look at the stamp points here. And that's a, a pretty good example of how we can use this to copy different shapes onto our objects. Now. This would be something that I would use probably more so in like a texturing setting where I'm going to create like, um, you know, sticks on the ground or rocks on the ground or something like that. But you can certainly use it for other effects like you saw in the intro video with the little like boils and stuff on our pig head. That is certainly something that you can use it for as well. So just some cool stuff that we can do with this. I definitely say this is a need to know node as far as cops goes. If you do any sort of texturing at all or wanna create your own custom textures, definitely something that you are gonna to want to uh, be very familiar with. But anyways, hopefully this has helped you out. Check out the other videos on my channel. We go over a lot of different stuff inside of Houdini. I've also been checking out a lot of the new features inside of 20.5. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, make sure to check that out. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.